So this week we start what we as Baptists call our annual prayer and self-denial appeal. And it's an opportunity for us as churches to spend time together thinking about, praying for, and engaging with world mission. <laughs> so listen to what the New Zealand Baptist Missionary Society has to say. There are two important aspects of the appeal, and we would encourage every Baptist family to participate in. The first is prayer. Please pray for our overseas missions. We strongly believe that through heartfelt and persistent prayer from our churches, the work of our missionaries overseas is flourishing in the communities we are serving. Please pray for the health and well-being and safety of our overseas teams and their families, especially with the added pressure of COVID-19. Please pray for opportunities to show God's love and share the good news. Please pray for individuals on a new journey with Jesus. Please pray for encouragement, energy, and refreshment. Please pray that God would provide the financial support that our missionaries need. And the second part of prayer and self-denial is obviously, of course, self-denial. And we want to encourage you, they say, to deny yourself something that you frequently use or do and give the savings to the work of the missions overseas. This challenge, this is important, is not designed to be a burden. So only give what you can. But find an opportunity to creatively reflect on world mission. Here are some ideas to get you started. Give up your weekly coffee or takeaway or entertainment. Do odd jobs for mum or dad or grandma or granddad. How about offering to clean the house, mow the lawn or weed the garden to earn a small amount to contribute to our missionaries who are hard at work? How about using up all the groceries you already have in your pantry instead of going to the supermarket? and use what you might have spent to support the mission as Baptist churches. Each year, prayer and self-denial has a theme, and this year, it's the master's peace, which in Te Reo Maori, if I pronounce it correctly, is aho tahuhu. God is weaving a masterpiece, and we are a strand of thread within it. This theme, this year is derived from the well-known metaphor of a beautiful woven tapestry. Tapestries have typically two very different sides. Can you see that? The front side of the tapestry is the beautiful artwork. This is the side that is proudly displayed and highly sought after. The back side of the tapestry is not so pretty to the eye. This side is full of knots, loose threads, and has no obvious pattern. It's a bit of a mess. In this year's appeal, we are likening the front side of the tapestry to the kingdom of God. God is the master weaver, and only he knows what the completed image looks like. We, we are simply the thread called to follow his guiding hand. The back side of the tapestry symbolizes that life gets messy. We make mistakes, hurt others, and go against God's instructions. Yet God uses our messiness and imperfections to weave his picture. Our people overseas are serving in some messy places. With God's guidance, we are helping him tidy up the mess as best we can. Now within each week, we will be focusing on a particular sub-theme or aspect. And this week we're going to look at Firifiriti Tangata, which means woven together, or God is weaving the people. You know, every time I go to um, the Baptist Hui, which is our sort of national meeting together of pastors, I'm often blown away by the courage and faithfulness of our missionaries. I know that I am one of the threads that God uses, but I know that God has called me to local mission. Whereas our missionaries are called to places so out of their comfort zone that they really and truly are the heroes of our faith. 
Um, this week we're beginning to see a pattern emerge that each one of us is a thread or a strand in the master or God's hand. And he's weaving us together so that we are a part of his mission in the world. It's interesting to see that God has put so many different people in this room together. And he knows that each one of us plays a special role in God's mission at Rumataka Baptist, that we're a special team. And God's got teams all over the place, and together we form this huge woven tapestry for God's kingdom on earth. And this reminded me of a time when God began to weave together a team that would help him with his mission to share the good news. And we read about it in Luke chapter 5, verses 1 to 11. Let me read it to you. One day as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, the people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. He saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one boat, and the one that, the one that belonged to Simon, and asked him to pull out a little from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. And when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. And Simon answered, Master, we worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. And when they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. They signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' feet and said, Go away from me, Lord, I am a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on you will fish for people. So they pulled their boats up on shore and left everything and followed him. And as Jesus traveled around, he added to his number of disciples. In total, Jesus had 12. All the disciples came from different backgrounds. They had different families, lived in different places, and worked in different jobs. Yet one thing they had in common was their belief that Jesus was the Messiah. And because they believed, they were willing to give up everything they had to follow him. And so here are the names of the 12 disciples, Peter and Andrew, fishermen brothers James and John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas, Matthew the tax collector, James and Thaddeus, Simon the zealot, and Judas the Iscariot, who later betrayed Jesus. Like the first disciples, our task today here at Rimataka and what our missionaries are doing around the world is first above everything else to share the gospel, to be fishers of men. And that's how we have defined mission, I think, for centuries. Um, as a going forth to lands unknown, to people unknown, to preach the gospel to the ends of the earth. So how do you think we're doing? What do you think? <laughs> well, I think it would be hard to think of a place today where the gospel hasn't been preached. Let's put it that way. But equally, equally we know there are many who do not believe in Jesus yet. And this is why it is essential that our missionaries go and help in places where the gospel message faces opposition or is hard to access. And as I said, they are an invaluable part of the tapestry. But how can we, who have been called to be missionaries in this sense, participate in God's mission in the world? How do we play our part in the process? Well, today I want to expand in your mind the idea of what mission is and how you can play a part in it. Uh, two years ago, I was privileged to study under Michael Gorman. He's an American professor who focuses on mission, as well as uh, George Wheeland at Kerry Baptist College. And they, they taught us afresh what mission was, and it blew my mind because I had never seen it before. 
See, firstly, we think of mission as something we go out and do rather than something that already exists and is underway. You see, God has a mission for this world, and he's been working out his mission since the beginning of time. So the mission of God is not something we go out and make happen. It's actually something God is already doing, and we participate in it. And secondly, I think it's important that being fishers of men um, means we often think uh, of evangelism only, right? You know, preaching the gospel. And I want to suggest that while that's important, we look at it a little bit differently. Preaching plays an important role, but it's not the whole picture. Let's take the example of the Apostle Paul, for instance. If I was to ask you, was Paul a missionary, what would you say? Yep, you're right. You'd probably tell me that there hasn't been or will never be a missionary that covered as much ground as Paul did. His travels were historic. Um, if I asked you, was he effective? You would say yes. The Gentile church is around today mostly because of God using Paul. He planted those first seeds. Well, it may interest you to know that Paul had a strategy for participating in the mission of God that was more than just preaching. Michael Gorman writes, Paul wanted the communities he addressed not merely to believe the gospel, but to become the gospel, and in so doing, participate in the very life and mission of God. Now, becoming the gospel is a lot more than just preaching the gospel. You see, becoming the gospel means that mission is actually then everything you do. It's not limited to a place or a time, it's every place and every time. It's your whole life. Every action is important. Participating in the mission of God is not just preaching the gospel. It's living the gospel. And so our mindsets must shift from this unconscious living out of our lives in a random as it comes sense to doing mission here and now. Uh, it's, it's for the one that looks out and anticipates that God is already at work. And where can I participate in that work? And it starts with me. And I live out the gospel and I begin to open my eyes to see what God is doing and how I can fit in with his plans and not how God should come in and be a part of mine. See, our lives are then convicted by the gospel. Our characters are transformed by the gospel. And together we are woven to, you know, into this relationship with God, first as individuals and then into the church, where each one of us becomes a part of this wonderful tapestry that God is weaving. And like the disciples, we are not perfect but God knew that when he brought us together. And he also knew that we were the right combination to, go, uh, to help God with his mission in this place at this time. Our unique life experiences and time with Jesus means we can be a great support to one another and encourage one another in our faiths to together reach out to the world so that others might come to know their place in the kingdom. On our own, we may feel like a single strand that can't really do much. But in the master's hand, in the weaver's hand, many single threads will create a masterpiece. I want us to spend time now praying for our missionaries and praying for our part in the great mission of God here at Rumataka.
Lord, we do lift up our precious missionaries around the world who are doing it hard at the moment, Lord, for your kingdom. Uh, in places where they often um, have gr a great deal of opposition, Lord Jesus, and where personal safe safety is a high priority. We pray for your protection over them and their families, Lord. I know many of them have young children with them as well. Um, we pray for good connections to be made within those communities, Lord Jesus, um, for the gospel to be preached, for the practical outworking of mission to be successful. Thank you that you lift up people as a result of the gospel. You don't leave them where they're at, Lord. They become transformed and they continue on this journey as we all do, sharing the gospel with those around us. So I pray for the, their protection and for your empowerment to be upon them, Lord Jesus. And I also know that, Lord, while overseas mission is also important, you care for us right where we're at. Here at Rumataka Baptist, you've woven us together to be your team here, to do mission in, in this place, Lord Jesus. And so I pray that you would lead and guide us, especially with the new initiatives we're, we're beginning here that people would come and so that we could share the gospel with them, Lord, so that we could feed not only their hunger, but their spiritual hunger as well. We just pray for your guidance. Um, knit us together, Lord. Tighten those threads. Join us together in unity so that we can do a great work for your kingdom, Lord Jesus, here in this place at this time. And Lord, as we leave today, may we have a different understanding of what mission is, Lord Jesus. That it's not just preaching the gospel, it is becoming the gospel. And it starts with us. Each and every one of us, as we live our lives each and every day, we are taking part in your mission that is already there and has a plan, Lord Jesus. So I pray that you would open our eyes to this knowledge um, so that we can participate in a greater sense in what you are doing around us, Lord Jesus. I pray your richest blessing upon the people here. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen.